Chairman Mao said, let those internal and external reactionary cliques face us in trepidation. When they say that this cannot be done and that cannot be done, ignore them. With indomitable and indefatigable efforts, the Chinese people will steadily attain their objectives. The sun rises from the east every morning with rosy rays in myriad shapes. Our great socialist fatherland is in a bright and splendid morning. Our great teacher, great leader, great commander, and great helmsman, Chairman Mao, is the red sun in our hearts. Under the leadership of Chairman Mao and the Chinese Communist Party, under the guidance of the general line for socialist construction of the party to strive hard and strive to advance, and to get greater, faster, better, and more economical results, and under the three great movements of class struggle, production struggle, and scientific testing, our Chinese people have achieved great successes. Our nation's people's communes are further developing and consolidating. In the wide countryside, there is revolutionary outlook everywhere, and there is laughter everywhere because of bumper crops. They sing, learn how to do things on a large scale, and have the courage to do things on a large scale. Gather the red flowers which are blooming everywhere on a large scale. The broad masses of workers on the industrial war front are fiercely engaged in revolutionization and fiercely breaking loose from foreignization to choose their own industrial development path. They are applying maximum efforts. They dare to apply maximum efforts. This spirit of applying maximum efforts is prevalent throughout the whole nation. Throughout our great fatherland, the heat of revolution is generating everywhere, and a new all-around leap-forward situation is emerging. Our national defense industry, under the correct leadership of the party's central committee, the great leadership of Chairman Mao, Comrade Lin Bao, the close war buddy of Chairman Mao, and Comrade Zhou Enlai, is progressing at a thousand li a day. Preparations for our nation's first nuclear test are intensely underway. Mao Zedong's thoughts guide us in all our work. In response to Vice Chairman Lin Bao's call, the comrades raise high the great red flag of Mao Zedong's ideology, creatively study and apply Chairman Mao's works, and apply themselves vigorously. Servicemen in the engineering corps, braving bitter winds and sandstorms, are struggling day and night, overcoming difficulties to erect various buildings and installations for the explosion. The scientific and technical personnel, even with crude instruments because of the lack of sophisticated instruments, are carrying on preparatory work in chemical analysis.
Our nation's broad masses of workers, engineers, technical personnel, scientists, and officers and men of the People's Liberation Army all energetically put their efforts together to make a large quantity of instruments and equipment. Here, the various instruments are undergoing a final check before the test. These instruments laid out on the site will accurately record the various results of the test. Chairman Mao has taught us that when the enemy sharpens his sword, we must sharpen our sword. We not only must have our own atomic bomb, but we must, under the threat of the enemy's atomic bomb, acquire the capability which we should have to destroy the enemy and the knowledge to preserve ourselves. The comrades ready for the test are intensely engaged in training activities. Fighters armed with Mao Zedong's thought are not deterred by any difficulty. For training, they pick the hottest time in the day to march in boiling sand. In each training session, how much sweat do they perspire? During the intense struggle, they always maintain the glorious traditions of our army, resolutely struggling in spite of hardships and displaying the cheerful revolutionary spirit. Comrades of the Cultural and Arts Troop penetrate deeply into the area to conduct propaganda and stimulating activities. The comrades, using discarded lumber to make poles and grass strings to weave a net, engage in mass physical exercise. In the whole test area, the atmosphere is enveloped with a spirit of unity, tension, solemnity, and animation. Comrades of the Quartermaster Corps are delivering supplies straight to the door with a single purpose of servicing the whole front wholeheartedly. Streamlined trains reach the site and sewing machines are moved to the barracks. The testing day is approaching and all types of equipment and arms for testing are transported to the site. In this testing, not only will all kinds of testing equipment and installations be used to measure the magnitudes of the atomic bomb, but four categories of equipment and installations for national defense, engineering, animals, and civil defense will be subjected to testing.
At 1500 hours on October 16, 1964, the event which shocked the whole world finally takes place. success. The atomic bomb designed and made by our own nation is a complete success. Russia's first nuclear test surpasses the levels of the first nuclear tests of the United States, Britain, and France. This is the result of the efforts of our nation's workers, engineers, technical personnel, scientists, officers, and men of the People's Liberation Army, and all those concerned who willingly raised high the great red flag of Mao Zedong's thought, gave prominence to politics, creatively studied and used Chairman Mao's works, and concentrated their efforts to wage a battle of annihilation with united and vigorous cooperation. This is a gigantic success of Mao Zedong's thought. This is a gigantic success of the general line. Long live the Chinese Communist Party. Long live Chairman Mao. Personnel and cars entering the contaminated area of the explosion for recovery work are given strict examinations. These women comrades are glad to join the ranks of combat. Entering the contaminated area is an intense battle of racing against minutes and seconds to complete the tasks. Chairman Mao says, in our work, we must be enthusiastic but calm, and intense but orderly. See how intensely and earnestly they attend to their work. They successfully return. The people greet them intimately and warmly. In the afternoon of October 16, 1964, Premier Cho announces the news about our nation's successful experiment in testing its first atomic bomb. The nuclear monopoly and nuclear tyranny of the U.S. imperialists and the revisionists 
have been thoroughly bankrupted. Their criminal attempts to block and prevent our nation's people from grasping nuclear weapons have been thoroughly smashed. Work for the second nuclear test has begun. The comrades, not fearing hard labor and fatigue and continual fighting, are eagerly engaged in the new battle. The combat teams are given pre-combat political indoctrination to prepare for an intense struggle maneuver. At present, the U.S. imperialists are shifting their warlike strategy to Asia. They are maniacally expanding the war of aggression in Vietnam and they are preparing to impose war on the heads of the Chinese people. Chairman Mao says, the imperialists have humiliated us so severely that we must seriously take them to account. We must be prepared to fight early, to fight on a large scale, to fight great nuclear wars, to fight all kinds of war, and on several fronts. Another stimulating and jubilant day arrives on May 14, 1965. Our nation successfully explodes its second nuclear bomb in the sky over the western part of our country. extremely accurate and extremely successful explosion. This demonstrates the great results of cooperation among leaders, specialists, and the masses, and of the cooperation of education with research. This is another victory song for Mao Zedong's thought. To gain military experience under atomic conditions, the various tactical and maneuvering units enter the area of the explosion to conduct tactical maneuvers. Following Chairman Mao's teachings, they go forward without fear of sacrifices to overwhelm difficulties and grasp victory. Chairman Mao has always taught us that weapons are an important factor in war, but they are not the decisive factor. The decisive factor is not material, but man. Vice Chairman Lin Bao points out that under nuclear conditions, the greater the power is, the more intense the close fighting and night fighting would be. Regardless of offensives or defensives, the final decisive battle will be one of close combat at 100 or 200 meters. At that time, it will depend on who is tougher, who can take a position, who can hold it, who dares to see red on his bayonet. At that time, it will depend on one's proletarian consciousness and one's courage. We have the spiritual atomic bomb, which is impossible for the enemy to acquire, and we also have the material atomic bomb. No enemy can defeat us. If the imperialists dare to impose war on our heads, we will finally break the sinews and bones of the aggressors and thoroughly and completely destroy all of them.
After the successful second nuclear testing, work on the third nuclear testing starts. Comrades on the testing site resolutely pursue the working styles of four firsts and three eight. The political air is thick in the entire testing area. Read Chairman Mao's books, obey Chairman Mao's orders, follow Chairman Mao's principles in doing things, and be a good fighter for Chairman Mao. This becomes the common behavior of all the comrades on the testing ground. They always carry Chairman Mao's works with them and study them everywhere and any time. They resolutely and thoroughly implement the directives of Vice Chairman Lin Bao on giving prominence to politics and the five principles. They study hard and apply their knowledge to their work. Here the cadres and servicemen are exchanging their experiences in the creative study and use of Chairman Mao's works. They realize that Chairman Mao's sayings are honest, most powerful, every sentence contains truth, every sentence is worth 10,000 other sentences, and Mao Zedong's thought gets results when applied in any situation. The kitchen comrades also put forth their efforts for this nuclear test. Look at the sandstorm and the howling wind, how turbulent they are, and the skies and earth, how dark they are. But who cares? No matter how great the difficulties are, they cannot be greater than the determination of fighters who are armed with Mao Zedong's thought. They, from the beginning to the end, resolutely stay at their fighting posts. Chairman Mao says, the Chinese people are not even afraid of death. How could they be afraid of difficulties? Our comrades, cadres, and fighters, following Chairman Mao's teachings of the spirit of the foolish old man who moved the mountains, are working together intensely to complete great engineering work. Comrades, remembering Chairman Mao's teachings, blend their sky-high revolutionary fervor with their scientific attitude to strictly check all types of instruments and installations. These are the materials and equipment for civilian uses to be tested. They are preparing the different animals for participation in the test.
九六六年五月九日十六时。The stimulating time, 1600 hours on May 9th, 1966, will soon be here. The nation's first nuclear bomb containing thermomaterials explodes successfully. From the time of the successful explosion of our first atomic bomb to the successful explosion of our first thermonuclear bomb, it took us only a little over one year. Such great leap forward progress proves that the Chinese people, equipped with Mao Zedong's thought, dare to take a road never before taken by their predecessors, dare to scale a peak never before scaled by their predecessors, and are able to equal any miracle done by anyone else. <laughs> The results of the third nuclear test again prove that the power of our nuclear weapon is tremendous. Nonetheless, it also again proves that with adequate protection, complete defense against nuclear weapons is possible. Look at these two dogs underground. They are much safer than those dogs on the surface. They had only an iron plate coated with lime over them. After the explosion, they are not harmed by the radiation. These chickens even laid eggs after the nuclear explosion. The monkeys in the sheltered headquarters leaped only once when the fierce explosion occurred. There is no damage to the electric lights and electric wires in the sheltered headquarters. The sheltered headquarters is adequate protection against atomic attack. The exposed buildings on the surface are seriously damaged, but the nearby semi-underground buildings are in good condition. The earth, scorched by the explosion, can still nourish plants. The seeds exposed to the explosion can still germinate and grow. Damaged crops can live and even grow luxuriantly. Khrushchev and his revisionists recklessly said that the atomic bomb would destroy all mankind. This is nothing but a devilish lie. They just want to bully the revolutionary people with their nuclear bomb. We proudly receive the wonderful news. Victory belongs to the great, glorious, and correct Chinese Communist Party. Glory belongs to our most, most beloved Chairman Mao. Thank you. 
百第三次核试验以后，再一次庄严宣布，中国进行必要而有限制的核。After the third nuclear test. Our government solemnly reiterates that China conducts necessary but restricted nuclear tests to develop nuclear weapons to oppose the nuclear tyranny and nuclear threats of the U.S. imperialists and their cooperators, and to oppose the connivance of the United States and the Soviet Union to monopolize nuclear weapons, to crush the revolutionary struggles of all the oppressed people and oppressed races. At any time or under any circumstance. China will never use the nuclear weapon first. The Chinese people and the Chinese government will, as they always have continuously, unswervingly struggle together with all the peace-loving peoples and nations in the whole world, and for the lofty goal of all our prohibition and thorough destruction of all nuclear weapons. The morale of the revolutionary people in the whole world is bolstered by the successful capability of the Chinese people. To control nuclear weapons, this punctures the pride of the imperialists, the neo-revisionists, and the reactionary cliques of various nations. For this, we have received numerous felicitations from fraternal parties, friendly countries, government leaders, people's groups, and enlightened personages, congratulating us on our great achievements in the third nuclear test. They cheer fervently because the nuclear weapons in the hands of the Chinese people are ones to be used for the protection of world peace, for inspiring the revolutionary people in the world to struggle against the United States. This is a victory of Mao Zedong's thought, and the victory of the general line. Shout aloud with fervent emotion. Sing aloud with fervent emotion. We must always remember Chairman Mao's dictum: "The atomic bomb is a paper tiger used by the U.S. reactionary cliques to frighten the people. It appears ferocious, but actually it is not. Of course, the atomic bomb is a large-scale mass-killing weapon. But what decides the outcome of a war is not one or two new weapons, but the people." The sun rises from the east every morning with rosy rays in myriad shapes. Our great socialist fatherland is in a bright and splendid morning. Our great teacher, great leader, great commander, and great helmsman, Chairman Mao, is the red sun in our hearts. Under the leadership of Chairman Mao and the Chinese Communist Party. Under the guidance of the general line for socialist construction of the party to strive hard and.
Chairman Mao said, let those internal and external reactionary cliques face us in trepidation. When they say that this cannot be done and that cannot be done, ignore them. With indomitable and indefatigable efforts, the Chinese people will steadily attain their objectives. Strive to advance and to get greater, faster, better, and more economical results. And under the three great movements of class struggle, production struggle, and scientific testing, our Chinese people have achieved great successes. Our nation's people's communes are further developing and consolidating. In the wide countryside, there is revolutionary outlook everywhere. And there is laughter everywhere because of bumper crops. They sing, learn how to do things on a large scale and have the courage to do things on a large scale. Gather the red flowers which are blooming everywhere on a large scale. The broad masses of workers on the industrial war front are fiercely engaged in revolutionization and fiercely breaking loose from foreignization to choose their own industrial development path. They are applying maximum efforts. They dare to apply maximum efforts. This spirit of applying maximum efforts is prevalent throughout the whole nation. Throughout our great fatherland, the heat of revolution is generating everywhere, and a new all-around leap-forward situation is emerging. Our national defense industry, under the correct leadership of the party's center.